So you guys know I grow a lot of stuff, flowers, fruit, herbs, I grow strawberries, I grow vegetables. But one thing I've never done is show you guys what I actually have going on at home. Khaled here with the Plant Charmer channel. Today I'm taking you guys on a home garden tour of the Plant Charmer. All right, so right now I'm standing at the front of my property. Uh, some of you guys who have been following me for a couple of years know this already. I have very little grass uh, and a lot of vegetables growing. So uh, if you look here, I don't maintain the grass. Uh, maybe I should give it a bit of water or a bit of chicken manure or whatever, but uh, my focus really is on the veggie beds. So the left bed here is about four feet wide. It's about 25 feet long. And where it curves, we'll add another uh, 10 feet or so. So we've got about 35 feet long by 4 feet wide here. Another band of grass, which is barely maintained at all. I mean, when I say barely maintained, that means I pass the lawnmower and that's it. Uh, it doesn't get water unless it rains. And then I've got another grow bed. This one's a bit wider. It's probably uh, 5 feet wide. So if you notice, there's an extra row of garlic in here that's not present in the other bed. Uh, so we have five rows of garlic, but more interestingly, I have this new garlic here. Uh, might sound surprising to you guys, I've never grown hard neck garlic before. I'm actually quite impressed at the size it reaches uh, and the vigor of the plant. So this is hard neck. This is the variety I've been growing for years, which is a soft neck garlic. Uh, I got the bulbs at Home Depot a couple of years back. Uh, in retrospective, I realized maybe they're not the best quality or the best genetics. Again, side by side, if I put my finger next to them, they're not very big. And if I go to the uh, hard neck garlic, you can tell these guys are fat. All right, so running a little test this year, Sago Lane lettuce, as you guys may know, is one of my favorite lettuces. It's a half bib, half uh, romaine lettuce. So you've got uh, the outer leaves of a bib lettuce, so buttery smooth, and you've got the, uh, the tight, really crunchy core of a romaine, which has not formed yet, by the way, in this lettuce. It's just starting, but if you look closely, you can actually uh, see the ribs of the lettuce, so you can tell it's gonna be a crunchy one. Interestingly enough, these lettuces are actually growing smaller than the ones I have in the rain gutters. So uh, I've got three of them here just as a test. And the three of them are smaller than the, the ones I have in the gutters, which I will show you later. Uh, so interesting experiment. I'm thinking it's due to the fact that the gutters have a superior quality medium in there. So let's just carry on. We're still at the front of my house, by the way. Uh, this is my mint patch. So let me just back it up a little so you guys can see. It's actually pretty big. So I've got this triangle type of a little grow bed or growing area in the front of my house. Most of it is mint, pure Moroccan mint. Uh, so if we go closer in, these plants are beautiful. Uh, the tips are, are very, very vigorous. The plants are large. And so this is where we get our mint for mojitos, for, uh, for salads. We get the mint from here also uh, for tea, of course. Now in the back there, as you guys can see, I have some uh, some tiger lilies. So they've been growing pretty strong, considering this spot here only gets late afternoon sun. As you can see right now, it's about 2 p.m. Uh, only the first corner here has light. And so that's quite interesting there. Hanging baskets. These were gifted by my father. Of course, this whole habit I have of growing gardens uh, did not come on its own. So my family is into gardening and I kind of got um, got a taste for it when I was young and, and I've continued every year. So my father brings these pots. Uh, he knows I'm going to take great care of them. They've got food, they've got plenty of water. And it's nice to have these little, uh, you know, clusters of color here at the front of the house. So look at this. I mean, they're common flowers, but they're just beautiful. Uh, so yeah, so I maintain those very well. We're going to get flowers season long from that, hopefully. Let's go to the back of the property now where the real interesting stuff uh, actually is. All right, so this is the entrance to my backyard. I've got the uh, the garden that I've put up on the fence here, try to maximize space. As you can see, not a lot of light actually uh, filters through here because my neighbors have a duplex and I have a duplex as well. So we're kind of sandwiched in between two tall buildings, uh, but it's okay. I've planted some onions in here and these onions, the top row is probably gonna mature to a decent onion, uh, but as you go down, you can clearly see that the light levels diminish and the onions don't look as hot. So 
Uh, if you go down here, same thing. Uh, they have trouble actually standing up. So what we do with onions like this is we're actually going to use them as green onions in the kitchen. I've got a tray uh, started with a uh, seed onion, which I'm going to plant in the front once the garlic is actually uh, out in a month or so. And so that's it. But these are going to be green onions. Right side, I've got two trays of extra strawberry plants I never got around to planting. This used to be where the mint was, by the way. Now it's turned into a weed jungle, so I got to rip all of this out. Uh, but I figured it wasn't worth cultivating this because there's so little light uh, that hits this grow bed. That mint actually did very good in here, surprisingly. Uh, but I've got enough mint right now, so, uh, so yeah, that's going to be it for the mint. Now that rose bush, it's right next to that mint bed there. Uh, it somewhat ma somehow manages to get enough light to flower. It's interesting because my parents planted this years ago, well years ago, like decades ago. It never flowered until I took over the garden uh, when I purchased the property and now it's flowering every year. So the secret was really to give it uh, a rich, balanced fertilizer formula that includes potassium and phosphorus. So a lot of people focus a lot on nitrogen, uh, but these plants in order to flower, they need more than that. They need a complete diet. And look at these blooms. They're just beautiful. Uh, there's more blooms coming and, uh, and that's it. I mean, I really like roses. If you have them in your garden once, you can tell uh, that despite the fact that they're useless in terms of feeding yourself, you're still going to want to grow them. All right, so this gutter that I'm filming is just right past the onions. I'm showing this so you guys can follow along. Uh, I've got some Sago Land lettuces in here. They're doing okay. Uh, there were a lot of shrubs and trees and wild stuff growing in the back because my neighbor barely maintains his yard. Wink, wink. Uh, so I took the liberty of jumping on the other side uh, with my saw or my saws all and I actually trimmed it all down so you guys can see all these crispy trees you're going to see more in their yard over there and uh, that's it so i kind of went ahead and did this these lettuces will be uh will be eaten by uh by us in between two batches so they're not my hottest lettuces again i got some much much better sago lanes in the back of the house which i'll show you guys and uh and that's it the gutters right underneath i never got around to planting anything uh, i'm not gonna lie the fact that there's very little light here actually discourages me a little bit so i try to focus my efforts on uh, on other stuff more crops we've got growing in gutters here so uh sugar snap peas so the first peas are actually uh growing and starting to uh, to set so again it's not the best location for that if you notice the first row is doing okay and then if you go to the second row, it's actually pretty sparse. And then same thing in the third row there. So all these things can be attributed to, to low light levels. So uh, whenever you've got low light, it's, it's really up to you to decide if you want to exploit that space plant and get whatever small harvest you can get out of it. Uh, in this case, it was just popping the seeds in, putting a couple of pellets of chicken manure and keeping it watered. So I did go for it. All right, from, from this point forth, the garden gets a lot more interesting. Uh, this is also on that fence. Uh, but if you notice, this is fully lit actually. So this part of the fence actually gets great light uh, and it shows in the plants that grow in it. Uh, except for these beets here, which are a little bit slow to grow, but that's fine. I mean, beets, you can just wait on them until they're ready. Uh, and I've got a lot more beets coming anyway for planting elsewhere. This here is where I'm planting my radishes. So what I'm trialing here is planting double rows of radishes in rain gutters. So we know a single row works very well, but I've also noticed that uh, there's a lot of space left and I'm pretty sure, uh, pretty sure because I haven't done it yet, but I'm pretty certain that uh, we can actually plant a double row of radishes in there. So we've got okay germination. I could have gotten better, but I've got long enough a stretch of doubles that have germinated to be able to tell with whether this is going to work or not. So it's going to be a, a rather interesting experiment. Right above that, I've got no, not the wild, not the wild vines. They're not there. They were not invited. Uh, so I've got sage. Okay, sage growing in rain gutters. Again, these are small plants. They don't like competition. At least when they start, they're small. So we give them a really good advantage by uh, giving them their own exclusive space. As you can see, they look pretty happy, uh, except for this guy here that keeled over a week or two ago. I'm not really sure it's going to come back. Uh, if you look closely, the smaller shoots at the bottom are alive, so I guess it's going to end up coming back. So uh, we don't use that much sage, so I only did half a gutter because the other half has uh, some parsley in. So these plants are establishing, but they're really, really nice looking. Parsley, of course, is a great staple of summer and salads and all kinds of cooking. Uh, really, really tasty stuff. So we like to have some available for our, 
our little kitchen adventures. All right, butternut squash. So these are butter baby squash plants. Uh, I've got one here. I've got one here, one here, and one here. So the plan for these guys is to actually cut off the side branching, uh, make them grow up vertically along these ropes, which are already there. Uh, the plants are far from being able to climb at this stage yet. So uh, we're gonna wait a little bit on that, but the plan is to make them go up this deck here and cover as much of the structure as possible. Uh, if you've noticed, I've got quite a bit of space left here. Uh, the bottom here at the base of the deck, which is invaded by weeds right now. We're gonna clear that double quick uh, and this week, and I've got some seedlings of uh, melons actually. So I've got a Charante melon, so savor. I've got mini love, which is a mini uh, watermelon. I also have Sarah's choice, which is gonna be a cantaloupe. So all of these are gonna occupy the rest of the space here. It's gonna be a very, very interesting experiment. Zucchini, of course. Uh, you don't need that many plants because they really produce a lot, especially when summer kicks in. So I've got one, two, and three plants, which should be plenty for the family. So uh, bear in mind when I say for the family, it's two households because my mother lives in the unit right above us. And so I kind of have to make everything in double. So, but the bonus is that she, uh, the good side is she actually cooks for us. So, you know, it's my pleasure to grow the stuff. I'm gonna end up eating it anyway. This, is gladiolus bulbs I've planted this year. Now the plants are developing super nice. I mean, look at this guy right here. Uh, they weren't there last year, they're really new. Uh, no flower stalks yet. So my job right now is to keep them fed, a balanced fertilizer, keep them watered, uh, not too much, so respect the watering schedules. Uh, but this is going to turn into a beautiful bed of flowers. So I'll make a follow-up video, uh, another garden tour, I guess, next month, so you guys can see the evolution there. But it's been going really, really, really well. All right, you guys may remember this tree. I actually cut it down a couple of weeks back. Look how many shoots there are on there. So if you guys remember on Instagram, we were all trying to decide whether we were gonna let this live, this tree, sorry, live or die. And then, uh, and then we all decided collectively that we would give it a chance. And while I'm filming this and talking to you guys, I'm realizing that there are ants on here. What are they doing? Are they farming aphids? Most likely. So you see these twisted, uh, actually I see the aphids. Let me try to focus on that super interesting part right here. Didn't expect to film this, but I want you guys to see it. If you guys see on the left side where that ant is, there are some transparent bubbles there. These are immature aphids, so they were probably just placed there by the ants, uh, which means we're going to have to do something about that, or the ants are going to distort all the growing shoots, and then if I film elsewhere, I'm starting to realize it's infested. So uh, we're gonna do something about that. Here is my another one of my flower patches. Uh, so I've got tiger lilies. I've got the hostas right here. And I've got these other lilies I've actually purchased uh, this year. So just like this guy. So they're Asian type lilies. They haven't made a lot of foliage, but they're blooming pretty extreme. So I'm gonna let them do their stuff. Maybe it's because it's their first season, so they're not blooming so, so hot yet. Uh, but yeah, we'll try to give them what they need. So fertilizer, light, water, uh, make sure we follow proper watering schedules and perhaps they'll get as tall as these tiger lilies are. All right, just backing up in that same bed again. So the lilies are in the back. I've got russet Burbank potatoes growing here. So I usually do not dig and trench and backfill and the whole thing with potatoes, but this year I'm trying it out. So we'll give it a shot. As you can see, the potatoes are actually grown uh, in a pretty shallow trench, but we've got enough material to mound up these plants. So they're doing great. Again, job is keeping them fed, keeping them watered, uh, making sure they have access to sunlight, uh, keep them weeded and that's it. We just got to wait for potatoes after that. So that was row number one. That's row uh, number two. Row number three only actually came up in half. So I did wait uh, quite a bit of time after I cut the potatoes into pieces before I planted them. So this may have something to do with it, uh, but that's going to be fine. So I'll have enough potatoes, I guess, with these two full rows, this, this. And then, so two and a half rows should give us plenty of potatoes. Look like nothing, but they're actually leeks. So I'm pretty happy because they took, I transplanted them a couple weeks back. Uh, usually when plants are, are this small, I have trouble actually uh, taking because they, they have such a small root system and the temperatures have been so hot. I mean, look at this stuff here. This is absolutely dry. So only the middle where the plants are is kept, um, is kept moist. But yeah, so these guys are still standing a couple weeks back. 
a couple weeks uh, into the uh, into the planting so we guess that it's going to be good for that so I've got about 40 uh, leek plants that are there I'm going to make a video on that because I know very few people make videos on growing leeks uh, and they can be quite interesting they they keep pretty well if you you can freeze them for winter uh, so that's going to be interesting to one grow and two have something really good from the garden to eat this winter all right so right past that gladiolus bed that i showed you before i've got a band of weeds here that i really need to get rid of but that's not what i want to show you guys it's actually this here so these are ace f1 bell pepper oh actually we have a pepper i didn't even notice so we have uh, some small bell peppers that are starting. So Ace F1, that's the variety that I grow on the farm. I've been growing it for years. It's good for the north because it ripens early in the season. And in fact, I've always gotten them to go, uh, to go red every year, which is great. This here, these are the mini eggplants. So Hansel and Gretel. So they're going to be these Asian type eggplants that we harvest when they're about uh, when they're about a hundred grams or so. So one of them is purple, one of them is white. Uh, of course, after years of trying different varieties and different eggplants, we've kind of shortlisted these because the flavor is great. Uh, so that's it. They all have their seven gallon container a piece, uh, which should give them plenty of room to grow. Of course, down the line, we are going to have to stake these. So I've got the bamboo stakes ready. I got the tomato clips ready. So we're just waiting for these guys to give me something to work with. All right, so earlier we were at that fence there. That's the grow bed with the gladiola, so you guys know where we are. Uh, down in that, that, uh, that slope here, I've got some uh, new raspberry plants uh, growing. So I've got five of them, which are about like this. As you can see, they're not, uh, they're not doing amazing. They're doing pretty good. But again, we've got all this unkept stuff. Uh, that needs to go so that's just a tree that grew on its own if we allow it to grow it's going to probably uh, destroy the fence and create some damage so i'm going to get on the saw and cut that later this week and then going down the road this the rope no going down the slope we have the red raspberries so these are a variety uh i believe called uh tulamine if i'm not wrong i got this bush well it was one bush originally uh over a decade ago it's a short raspberry variety so the canes are actually pretty short uh they get to what to my belly at most and i'm six feet tall so most raspberries will grow lo longer canes than this the reason we picked this one here is because it's very very easy to maintain because it doesn't need to be trained or anything like that but the production on it is not amazing though so uh it kind of spreads on its own we let it do its thing we just throw one or two handfuls of fertilizer in there every season keep it watered and we get what we get but yeah it could definitely use a pretty good cleanup this raspberry patch is actually a lot more interesting these are the story is very interesting behind them and the fruit also is very interesting so uh this this plant i actually got at my mother works in a kindergarten and they had this wild plant growing on their land there uh, i wasn't maintained by anybody so i'm not sure if it's a cultivated variety that somebody actually just dumped there and it kept growing or, or somebody or it was just a wild variety but Either way, I noticed that every time they would mow the lawn there, they would just pass over that plant and destroy it. So I figured it wouldn't last very long. I took uh, some cuttings a couple years back. And if you notice, these are coming out in clusters of, of raspberries. Uh, and this thing just doesn't stop producing. So look, this here, this here. I mean, this thing is loaded with clusters of berries. And they're black raspberries, which are excellent, excellent for your health. Uh, because of all the polyphenols that they contain uh, so this is like the ultimate secret i would say to live 100 years old so maybe not but it's got a lot of good stuff in it uh, studies prove that antioxidants in this are extremely high and so you really want this so a uh, couple of weeks this is going to ripen and we're going to be gorging on these raspberries my daughter is actually going to be turning one year old when this actually ripens so she'll be tasting those for the first time all right, so this is where the lettuce actually gets a little serious. So this lettuce, lettuce, sorry, is treated just like I would treat it on the farm. So this up here is a new ham, which is an improved little gem. Uh, they are, what, max a week away from being harvested. And you can tell, by the way, because the core or the heart is starting to close. So right as the heart is closed, but before the plants elongate is when you need to harvest them. So they're not quite ready yet. Uh, we're going to let the hearts or the cores uh, tighten a little bit, uh, grow more leaves in the center for that crunchy texture when we bite into it. 
And look at this. When I was telling you guys that Sigolen in the front can't compete with Sigolen in the rain gutters, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. So these plants are huge. I mean, look at that. My hand is on top and it's only, uh, it's only looking not as big as it is because they're actually compressed one against the other. So I use a six inch spacing. This is a five foot gutter. I've got exactly 10 plants growing in there. And so they're doing great, great, great in the rain gutters. I'm thinking it's due to the fact that uh, we use Pro Mix in there, which dries up and, and can be watered often, which uh, helps with the oxygen level that the plants have. So yeah, we can't wait to eat these again. It's a mix of a bib lettuce and a romaine lettuce, so pure delight. I mean, you put that in your plate and you're a happy camper. Third level here, I've got some habanero peppers. So these are a small plant, so it's a hot paper lantern, that's the variety. And uh, that's it. So these guys have not started setting fruit yet, but the fruit that they set is absolutely scorching. All right, so you guys may have seen this, uh, may have seen this, sorry, from my Instagram posts. I've got two full-size frames that I've set up in my backyard uh, in order to increase my production and make some cool content for you guys. So uh, top here, I mean, look at this giant. It's a Napa cabbage called Minue, and it's a mini. So I, I don't even want to see what the full-size plants look like. Uh, it's, it's interesting, actually, that somebody a couple of days ago told me about tip burn in lettuces uh, and tip burn in different plants such as strawberries and I wanted to show you guys tip burn looks like this and tip burn is actually due to the uh, to insufficient calcium in the leaves so what happens is the plants pump it up through evapotranspiration which means they suck they suck it up from uh, from the root system here I'm trying to focus this yep yeah, from the root system and it goes up the plant and the plants actually transpire or evapotranspire, which means they lose water through their leaves. So as they leave, lose water, whatever was in that water stays in the plant tissue. So when the plants, uh, when the water does not contain enough calcium, such as was the case here, well, the cells in that area collapse. So that's what happened here. Interestingly enough, I gave them food and two days later, if you look at the center of this cabbage, the, the new shoots don't have this problem anymore. So we should be good on that. But yeah, attempting to grow such large plants in such small containers can be a challenge. And it can also be a challenge if you're trying broccoli and cauliflower, which I've got growing in this lower level here. So the idea behind that is to create a completely new product an individual sized broccoli and individual sized cauliflower. So, so far the plants are doing great signs of nitrogen deficiency right there but the plants have been fed and look how easily these leaves pull out so when you can pull the leaf so easily from the plant it means the plant is actually discarding it so uh so yeah cauliflower broccoli again we got to keep them fed we got to keep them watered and we got to pray okay so because i'm not sure if these plants are going to freak out and just bolt on me at some point uh, but if we look down in the plant uh, we got some new green shoots. It's all looking all nice and, and good in there. So I'm just crossing fingers that this has a chance to grow. If you guys take a look at the lower level, I've got some green beans on the first level and some yellow beans on the second level. Now, because I'm in Canada and the temperature is just so unstable for so long before it stays consistently warm, uh, germination is not always great. So wherever there is a spot that didn't come up, I've actually replanted stuff. Uh, the beauty with the beauty of hot weather or warm weather is whenever you plant a seed in the soil directly, it germinates very quickly and at a high rate of germination. So, uh, so we're just going to wait for these plants to come up and they'll probably catch up or close to catch up with these guys that are already out and have leaves. All right, peppers. So I can't live without growing peppers. So every year I got to grow them. Uh, so that top row, that's the second frame, by the way. Let me just back it up a second. That's the second frame. So top row, I've got the lunchbox peppers, the miniature peppers in there. So as you can see, they're starting to set fruit. Uh, they're starting to set fruit already. A couple small peppers growing in there. So these plants really start taking off and start doing something interesting when the weather gets really warm. So, uh, so look at that here. Uh, we probably have more fruit elsewhere. So yeah, just the beginning of fruit that is setting. Of course, it's warm, pollinators are out. So whatever flower is actually produced by the plant at this time of year will have no trouble being pollinated. I mean, look at that. I already have 
uh, four peppers on this plant. So one, two, three, four, more flower buds coming. So as long as you keep the food and the water coming and the light and the warmth are there, you're going to get loads of pepper. These are jalapeno peppers. So each plant has its own habits, depending on cultivar, depending on uh, the genus, depending on the type of plant it is really. These guys have not flowered yet, but I see these tiny little uh, tiny little balls here, which are most likely small flowers that are about to open. Uh, so, so far so good. Again, same thing. I got a row of them, so a 10 footer planted in jalapeno. Uh, again, we're going to find a way to conserve these for winter. Uh, we like to eat hot peppers, so we're going to make sauces out of them or whatever. But yeah, they're always good to have on hand. If we go down one level again, we have uh, the cayenne peppers. So as you can see, we have flowers, uh, flowers on this guy. But this guy actually has peppers already, or a pepper, sorry. So, but a lot more flower buds, a lot more flowers coming. So we're expecting pretty good yield. As long as we keep them fed, uh, in this case, they'll have to be supported. I got this little wire here for support. I'll make a video on that, by the way. It's a new technique I came up with uh, for plant supports in the frames. Very, very cheap, very quick to set up, very interesting. Uh, but see, we've got more peppers here and then more peppers here. And so these guys are doing really, really good. And that final row, I didn't have any... Uh, I had the habanero peppers, but I only had five plants. And so I decided to put some basil in here instead that last level. So these guys are really doing good. Uh, they're trying to grow, of course, from the main branch, and that is due to apical dominance. Uh, I did explain that on one of my last Instagram posts, but basically apical dominance means the majority of the growth hormone, which is called auxin, is going to be directed at the main stem. So the plant actually sends it up and grows the apex so the apex basically means the top so apical dominance ensures that the top is going to be do dominant all the time the way we actually break that apical dominance is by topping the plant which forces it to redistri redistribute the auxin hormone to the side branching and that's how you get a bush instead of a stick all right, so when I see these albio plants, I just want to say mamma mia, because the plants are, have grown some massive leaves. Uh, these are the leftover plants, which I've saved from last year. I'm not really sure if it counts as a second year planting or first year, because last year they really didn't do anything. They got very little maintenance. And so the problem with reusing plants, by the way, is that they grow too many crowns and the energy is divided into too many uh, different shoots which makes smaller and smaller strawberries. So I don't think it's going to be the case here, uh, but these plants are literally massive. So at this stage, because the plants uh, touch each other, if you guys follow my stuff and my advice, when the leaves touch one another and when the soil is barely still visible, it's time to allow them to fruit. I think what I'm filming now confirms that this matches the description. So we're going to allow these guys to fruit at this point. And we've got more basil here. I mean, I'm really doing that as a demonstration of what the mini can do so uh, so that you guys can see if you build your own mini at home or you want to get into vertical gardening, uh, there are some great results to be had if you just follow the right techniques. Down there, we've just planted some green beans, some more beans. Uh, beans keep very well. They grow very well in rain gutters, so uh, and they're delicious when they're fresh from the garden. All right, so I've dedicated an entire side, which is the equivalent of an entire frame, uh, to strawberries. So you guys know I love strawberries. I love growing them. I love eating them. I love talking about them. I love filming them. Uh, but yeah, jokes aside, uh, we eat a lot of strawberries. They keep very well. They freeze. Uh, and it's a really nice taste of summer when you're in the middle of a dark, cold, long winter. So these are a variety called Florida Beauty. Uh, it's a new variety that uh, the agronomist at my supplier actually suggested this year. So they have a pretty aggressive flowering habit. That's what I found so far. Uh, but I was instructed to just remove the flowers once and let them do their thing. Now, in retrospective, I think I should have uh, removed the flowers for a bit longer because the plants are not as big as I want. Uh, but regardless, that's going to sort itself out in a couple of weeks. So uh, we're getting the first... Uh, strawberries which I call st practice strawberries so the plants are getting uh, you know more familiar I guess with the act of fruiting uh, but sub subsequent fruitings will actually 
hopefully have larger berries. I'm saying hopefully because I never grew this variety before. Maybe it just pops clusters of small berries, uh, but time will tell. Wanted to show you guys two things here. So, of course, these are looking great. These are planted in the larger five inch gutters. These are true five inch gutters. So if I put my hand here, they're actually pretty wide. They're made out of metal, so they cut. So you have to be careful if you're using these. But one mistake I made actually is because I'm not familiar with growing in these channels, uh, the bottom channel got burned to a crisp. So look at this, especially towards the end of the gutter here, I've actually murdered these plants. Like I never do this stuff, but apparently I did this time. And look at that, this guy has just been obliterated and so has this guy. So, uh, so that's it. Just wanted to show you guys that because I'm a professional at growing strawberries. I make those mistakes. Uh, so if your confidence gets shaken up by the fact that you've actually had a couple of bad experiences or a couple of bad plants, it's just part of the game. You know, it's, it's life. So, uh, you can never fully control life. You can never completely, uh, understand it or, or you know completely wrap your mind around it or even if you do there are genetic mutations that happen and all kinds of stuff that happens which makes it so that we talk about percentages and averages more than we talk about perfect scores so if you average 95 plus percent of your plants that are good the other five percent you probably couldn't do anything about all right last part of this video is my tomatoes so this guy is pretty much in the shade all day uh it's a cherry tomato this guy gets a little bit more sun this guy more and then from this point it's all San Marzo tomatoes so let me just get a little closer so San Marzano tomatoes they've actually got some pretty good side branches at this point which I'm going to remove and these plants there all the way inside that slope as well are gonna get trained up with uh, with these clips so tomato clips we're just gonna clip them to the netting here and the netting here let them work their way up we're gonna clip all of that side branching as they grow in order to focus the energy on the main stem and to maintain a decent airflow between plants because I've barely got 16 inches between plants here. So these plants get big, so we're gonna to have to do our job and control them, but we're gonna get some really great tomatoes out of that. For those who are not familiar, San Marzano is the king of sauce tomatoes, so no acidity at all. And uh, we're starting to get fruit. I guess so same thing you got to keep them fed you got to keep them watered now keep in mind as temperatures go up uh, and sunlight becomes stronger so does the food consumption of plant and water intake so you need to keep up with that what happens a lot is I see people who have great gardens and they tell me Calais it's going super well and then uh, the plants they get a boost of growth and then they just go yellow and start going downhill well that's because they started needing more food and they depleted what you gave them and you did not replenish it. So get in the habit of giving your plants food on a regular basis uh, more often with smaller amounts is superior to less often with larger amounts when it comes to fertilizing. So one, your plants get less of a roller coaster ride in terms of food concentration. Two, the chances of burning your plants are diminished greatly. And so that's a good habit to have when you're gardening. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little tour of my garden. Uh, it's quite a bit of plants in there. I'm going to make a video every month showing you guys the progress on that. And until then, keep it green and I'll see you next time.